Good morning, I'm Tim. Join me as I discuss my conversion of five Guilo's free flight radio control model airplane kits to radio control flight and discuss lessons learned that can apply to any conversion you might be thinking of. Let's get to it. I've converted five um, Guilo's free flight model airplane kits to radar control flight. These include the Lancer, the Arrow, the Aronka Champ, the Pilatus Porter, and my latest one, the giant scale F6F Hellcat by Guilo's. What I'll do throughout this video is I will um, show each airplane, I will point to a video card that will be a complete video of what I did to build that airplane. We'll see a video of it flying, so we'll see how it flies. Then I'll just discuss some lessons learned that might help you with any conversion you might make for these Guilo's aircraft. The Guilo's kits are designed to be free flight uh, models with rubber band powered motors, so there is a light construction. So there's some pretty easy changes you make to handle radio control flight. Also, when the Guilo's kits were designed decades ago, there was the only power for these was small gas engines, typically an 020 or an 049 Cox gas engine. And so these planes work pretty good for uh, U-control flight, and some people actually flew them ready to control them, but the equipment was so heavy back then, it was almost invariably a single-channel rudder-only control with a gas engine. That's a lot of work to make one of those things fly. Today, with our small um, electrical uh, power systems and electronics, everything's changed. However, there's very little to zero information in the kits themselves to do this conversion. In this video and the cards that I'll show you, everything you'll need to know to convert these models. The Guilo's kits are essentially three types of models. You have the first set, which has fairly small wingspans, 16 to 18 inches. I've not converted any of those. They're pretty small for what I've done up to now. The medium group, I call it, has wingspans from 24 to 28 inches. These are very good uh, candidates. The Porter and the um, Aronka Champ are two of those examples. Then there's five kits in the giant scale, which is a step above. That's the Hellcat. That uses regular radio control servos, receiver, and motor. And I'll, I'll go through all that um, in this video. But for the control of the medium ones, the 24 to 20 inch wingspan, I found an absolutely ideal system for control and power are the Spectrum uh, Electronics. I'll put a card up here that'll tell you exactly where to buy these things. At Stevens Arrow is what I use. But you have a geared motor and a prop. This wonderful little component here, I call it the brick. There are two linear servos that go back and forth, a receiver, electronic speed control, all built in. There's an antenna. And what's really nice is these two little ports here can plug in for uh, separate aileron servos. And this is just a servo that goes back and forth if you wish to have full uh, four channel flight or for some aircraft, like for example, on the Hellcat, I had three channels with uh, throttle control, elevator, and ailerons on the model that worked fine. They're powered by this little battery here. This whole setup weighs half of an ounce. And speaking of weight, as you build these uh, models, you'll see in my videos, in this video, the weight is absolutely important. It's worth your time to get a uh, micro scale on Amazon. They're easily available just on off. And it shows ounces or kilograms, I use pounds. For ounces and tenths of an ounce, it's very helpful to see how your model construction is coming along. My first construction uh, conversion project was the Lancer, and um, it, it flies great. So let's take a look at the video of how that flies. I'll put a card up here for the full uh, for the further information on the Lancer. But let's take a look at how um, it flies right now. It was a lot of fun converting the Lancer, and I learned a lot. Um, so let me go over what's going on. So <clears throat> what you'll see in the video is you've got to beef up the front section. Here I put 1 60th inch plywood, uh, not plywood, balsa. And that allows for an engine mount, landing gear, and the electronics. You'll note that the width of the Lancer is really quite narrow. And with the electronics, they just won't fit in because it's so narrow. 
So what I did was I mounted the electronics sideways. That's just an example of the ad adaptability you have to do to have the Lancer. Notice also the battery was back here for a little bit of FCG. I had to actually put a dime here to make the center gravity balance. I used rubber bands to put on the wing. I don't think rubber bands are necessary. My later models, I simply glued on the wing. I think it's fine for these lighter weight models. Note also, this is an extremely lightweight model. It weighs about 1.7 ounces. And you can see just how minimal and sparse the wing construction is. The leading edge is 1 16th inch balsa, same for the trailing edge, 1 16th inch balsa ribs, and just two spars and a 1 16th inch square balsa. There's really nothing there holding it. So I knew I had to put some balsa in place for a wing mount and a little bit of plywood reinforcing so the uh, rubber bands don't chew into that. But what I found is, even though this is a minimalist structure, because the plane's so light and the iron covering provides a surprising amount of strength on it, you just have to be careful applying the covering because if you shrink it too much, you're going to get warps. Now, this is one of their contest series of flyers from Guilos, so it's obviously not a scale model. So I picked this because it was designed to fly well as a free flight model. You'll note it also has a lifting stabilizer and elevator for the back. That's optimized for uh, contest flying. It's a lot of work to make this and cut off the elevators. If I were to do this again, both the fin rudder stab and elevator would be 1 16th inch uh, balsa. That works fine. It's lightweight. <clears throat> 1 16th is just thin enough. You might get some warps. I'll put a few reinforcing strips of either 1 32nd or 1 16th inch balsa. That will do well to hold everything in place. But no, you'll have to uh, figure out how to put on the elevator and the rudder on these models. So the card gives further information. That's really the lessons learned. The key on this is, though, is weight. It weighs 1.7 ounces, but boy, it flies absolutely great. And um, I flew it a lot indoors when I was living in Chicago with the windy uh, winter weather. Second conversion is uh, the Guilo's Arrow. I'll put a card uh, on the detailed construction of the Arrow. Let's take a look at a video to see how the Arrow flies. The Arrow is from the same uh, contest series of uh, uh, flyers from Guilo's aircraft. It's much like the Lancer, but it's just bigger and more built up. It's a 28-inch wingspan. The weight came in at 2.5 ounces. That's okay for the park zone system. Just be careful going much uh, further above that. A little bit more space to work with. Again, I use the rubber bands. I, I wouldn't do that in the future. This is just kind of a test more than anything else. I have the lifting stab, which works fine. But again, it's a lot of work to make the airfoil shape. I for sure would make that like the fin rudder 1 16th inch balsa. I think that would work out okay. So it's a bigger fuselage. You can see the electronics went in sideways. The motor is pretty easy to mount. Make sure with all of these models you pay attention to the center of gravity. I had to add a few washers, epoxy them in to bring the CG uh, to where it should be. Again, planning ahead, what I could do to minimize that, put the battery further forward, just the experience of buying. All the landing gears of every Guilo's kits need attention. They are simply not strong enough for radar control flight. What I did was on my own, I bent it. So it went along the fuselage sides and epoxy held everything in place and that worked out well. Note also, I keep a lot of the bottom open just so I can have access to the components, uh, cooling, which is not really an issue. But as you can see from the video, this model flew exceptionally well. Um, I actually built a second arrow because I like this so much. But for example, I put solid balls around here just to make it look a little bit better. You can see the little bit of a bending of the one uh, 16th inch square balsa. That added weight. The model came in at pretty close to three ounces, which made a difference in how it flew. Also, you can see it's very easy to apply decals to the iron-on covering. I'll put a video uh, card on the decals. Those are super easy to make and apply on your home computer. My third conversion project is the Guilo's um, Champion. Um, the card is up here for the Champion, and let's take a look at how the Champion flies.
The Champion obviously is a little bit more work than the Arrow. The wingspan is 24 inches, but there's a, a, the width of the cord is much larger. Probably the biggest point I want to make on the Champion as you approach this, because you're making modifications as you build it, you're almost designing the kit as you build it. The Guido's kit has the wing in two halves that glue on to the side of the fuselage. I think it's almost impossible to get those both at the same angle of incidence. I don't know how anybody with a small model like that gets it completely right. You've simply got to build it on a flat building board, which is what I did. So I created um, a center section, just used 1 16th inch balsa to reinforce it on the side to make it a one piece wing cut off the top structure. You can see in the video how to do that. So the wing is glued on as a single piece wing. Also with all of these Guilo kits, I like to put a, about a 1 16th inch spacer in the front for just a little bit of a positive incidence on the wing. It seems to help it flying uh, better. So that worked out well. The wing glued in place actually reinforces the fuselage, holds everything in place. Note also, as I said, I've learned my lesson. There's 1 16th inch balsa for the vertical and horizontal tail surfaces. That worked fine. I mentioned doing the reinforcement. You can see through the covering, there's another 1 16th inch layer where the control horn has to go in. And it's a little bit thin where the rudder goes here. That's helpful. Same reinforcement concept on the top of the rudder, necessary with the two elevator halves to make sure all that's connected with the control horn underneath. It's a three channel model with rudder, elevator, and throttle. Um, with the uh, cowl, is that plastic cowl you get with the Guilos kits, just because this is a first attempt, I used iron-on covering. It works pretty good on the plastic just to get some color to it. Also on this one, you can see the park zone electronics. I kept this uncovered just so I could see how things work, and I wanted to keep the center of gravity as far forward as possible so the battery goes in the front. That works out fine. Note also, I still, you can see it kind of peeking in there. I had to epoxy in a bolt to keep the center of gravity forward. Also, because I knew it was going to be tail heavy, you can see that I eliminated some of the 1 16th inch stringers back here where they're really not needed on the side just to try to make it as lightweight as possible and not contribute to the tail heaviness of the aircraft. Nice touch with the wheels. I think the wheels are a super important part of any RC model. These are Dubro 1 half inch tail wheels and they weigh nothing and they look great, I think, on the Aronk itself. My next conversion was the Pilatus PC6 Porter from Guilos, uh, 20 inch wingspan. So there's a card for a detailed build of this aircraft. Let's take a brief look at how the Pilatus flies. So the Pilatus uh, took a lot of um, the experiences from the Aronka. Some things that I was looking at as I build it, it's a very long nose moment, just the way the plane's designed. I was concerned actually it might be nose heavy, so I was just kind of keeping that as consideration. Much more complex landing gear as I described in the video, there really wasn't detailed information on that. But the good news is on the newer, or I should say the updated Guilos kits that use the um, laser cutting instead of the die cutting, the plans are much more complete and you actually you have a real three view of the airplane and even if you didn't you can get that off the internet. So I just create I crafted landing gear with the three struts off of a three view glued it in place. What you find is with this music wire, even though this is very thin, this is probably one sixteenth inch, by reinforcing each other it provides an exceptionally strong structure. So that looks good and it it, it, it goes in pretty well. Again, one sixteenth inch balls for the tail surfaces is the Aronka with the reinforcement. Uh, the wing is a single piece wing like the Aronka. Um, I think the wing area is a little bit less than this because of the narrower cord. So that'd be part of the experiment. And I um, located the battery up here in the hatch because it's such a narrow fuselage. I couldn't fit it under the nose like the Aronka. It just goes into that little opening there. And I actually put in covering. You can see the parks and electronics in there. The, f the fuselage is wide enough here to fit that in. Notice. Also, the bolt for center gravity, I had to glue that in, but the cowl goes pretty, uh, fits pretty well over that, and I think it looks nice. 
As a final touch, the decals are, are great with this kit, and I think it looks uh, very nice in this red paint scheme. And the last conversion in this video is the uh, giant scale um, Grumman F6F Hellcat by Guilos. So I'll put a card up for the complete build of this one, and let's take a look and see how the Hellcat flies. So this is a pretty advanced project, but it, it came out well, and it was um, I learned a lot from the other Guilos conversions going to this. First of all, because when I looked at this kit, the proportions are about right for a model. There's a good nose moment, plenty of wing area, um, and it's big enough to hose to house any equipment. There's no way on earth the park zone is going to handle this. This model weighs about 12 ounces with a battery. So I had to go with the regular components that's all in the video in the description, but I also had to build a hatch. So I just made this hatch come off with a canopy. And you can take a look inside, it's just a standard uh, Spectrum AR620 receiver, high-tech HS55 servo, uh, Park 370 electric motor, and then a, uh, a LiPo to, to do it all with a, with a um, uh, Castle 15 um, electronic speed control. So um, the video does a good job explaining how to build this. The wing is obviously glued into place because you have the belly that's put in, it'd be very hard to make this remove, or removal. I did standard techniques of removing certain ribs to make it lighter. The iron-on covering is a park light covering. It provides a tremendous amount of strength when it's all in. I made this three channels with throttle, elevator. There's no rudder control, rather you have the ailerons. And what I did was I simply put in two HS55 servos for the ailerons, ailerons and that was the right answer. I decided to make it with no landing gear. I put a popsicle stick a skid here to land on the belly, put some 1 16th inch balsa just to try to keep it from getting beat up too much. And it plunks down, but I try to land on the grass to minimize any scuffing and damage from there. The plane flies great. It's a fighter. Um, it's zipping right along, but it looks very convincing in the air. And I was just very pleased with the entire build of this kit. Again, the video will go into details, but uh, it can be done. It uses normal radio control equipment, and um, it's just a, it's something worthwhile considering if you want to take on one of the larger project projects. Thank you for joining me in this video. Converting the Guilos kits to radio control flight is a lot of fun. You learn a lot. And I think with my videos and the individual videos of the builds, there's just about all the information you need to have a su successful build. You don't need a lot of tools or equipment. Just the three things I tell you to pay attention to is minimize weight, minimize weight, minimize weight. If you can keep it light um, and keep everything warp free on the wings and the tail surfaces, you should be rewarded with a pleasant and fun flying scale model for Guillos.